Now, what is the treatment of choice? The treatment of choice will be complete tumor removal. That will be the treatment of choice. Okay. But whenever you are doing this adrenalectomy, we do either partial or total adrenalectomy should be done. Now, the point is, if there is bilateral adrenal pheochromocytoma, bilateral adrenal pheochromocytoma, remember, you need to preserve the adrenal cortex. You need to preserve the adrenal cortex. Why? Mainly to prevent, right, mainly to prevent the Addison's, you need to preserve the adrenal cortex. That is very, very important. And the next important is, these patients, they have the hypertensive crisis, right? So, preoperative preparation of the patient has to be considered. And how much should be the blood pressure before taking to surgery? It should be less than 169 by 90 millimeters of mercury. Then, until then, how will you achieve to reduce the blood pressure? So, the drug of choice will be phenoxybenzamine, which is an alpha blocker, right? So, the blood pressure has to be controlled by alpha adrenergic blocker, that is phenoxybenzamine, which is an oral formulation, right? So, if you take the dosage of the phenoxybenzamine, that is around 0 0.5 to 4 milligram per kg body weight. 0 0.5 to 4 milligram per kg body weight. That is what is the dosage of the phenoxybenzamine to control the blood pressure within the individual. Right? And the next important is, these patients, they are volume constricted because the, there is excessive catecholamines. They are causing severe vasoconstriction of the blood vessel. So, they are like volume constricted. That is the reason why liberal salt intake and hydration are necessary. Okay. So, liberal salt intake and hydration will avoid orthostasis. Right. Will avoid severe orthostasis. Okay. Then, what are the other drugs that can reduce the blood pressure of the individual? So, that is oral progesin and as well as the intravenous phentolamine, they are mainly given to reduce the paroxysms, right? They are mainly given to reduce the paroxysms or they are mainly given to manage the paroxysms, okay? So, that is about the treat because whenever you are giving this phenoxybenzamine, it may take time for adequate alpha blockade. So, until the adequate alpha blockade has achieved, you can give this intravenous formulations of the phentolamine mainly to control the paroxysms. Then, what are the other alternative drugs to control the blood pressure? You can give beta blockers, that is 10 milligrams of propranolol. But whenever you are giving these beta blockers, always remember, it is first alpha blockers, followed by that, we give beta blockers. And whenever you are giving propranolol, the dosage is 10 milligrams propranolol 3 to 4 times per day. Right? 3 to 4 times per day. So, that is about the beta blockers. Then, what are the other antihypertensives? The other antihypertensives that can be given is the calcium channel blockers or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. So, once you achieve the blood pressure of less than 169 by 90 with all these antihypertensives, then you need to plan for the surgery. So, surgery whenever you are doing, it should be a team approach. Okay. So, you require a surgeon, you require an anesthesiologist and you require an experienced person in managing this pheochromocytoma. And you need to know that the blood pressure in these patients with pheochromocytoma, it is labile during surgery right? It is labile during surgery. Because whenever you are doing surgery, there can be spillage of the tumor into the circulation. And once there is spillage of the tumor into the circulation, you know, there can be intraoperative hypertensive crisis. So, how will you manage that intraoperative hypertensive crisis is either by nitroprusside infusion or 
by nitroglycerin so intraoperative hypertensive crisis right so how do you manage that that is by nitroprusside infusion or by nitroglycerin supplementation and this blood pressure is usually labile during the spillage of the tumor into the circulation and the other reason why there can be labile is during the onset of the intubation so during the onset of intubation the individual has to struggle little during which there can be massive release of catecholamine into the circulation or when the tumor is manipulated then also the blood pressure can be labile and you need to manage with, with nitroprusside infusion or nitro, IV nitroglycerin but the only thing the adverse effects that can develop is whenever you are giving nitroprusside there can be development of the hypotension and this hypotension can easily be managed by volume infusion so you need to give good amount of IV fluids in order to maintain the blood pressure of the individual and the next important is the alternative methods of removal of the tumor so we have minimally invasive techniques the minimally invasive techniques that is by laparoscopy or right or by retroperitoneoscopy right laparoscopy or retroperitoneoscopy they have become the standard approaches in the pheochromocytoma surgery right they have become the standard approaches in pheochromocytoma surgery that is the minimally invasive technique what is the advantage of them the advantage of them is they have fewer complications they have faster recovery they have optimal cosmetic results also right they have optimal cosmetic results also so that is about the treatment with the minimally invasive techniques right and this extra adrenal tumors that is extra adrenal abdominal or you take the extra adrenal thoracic tumors even they also can be removed endoscopically right even they also can be removed endoscopically so these are the various alternative methods of the treatment now once you have removed the tumor post operatively you need to look for the catecholamine normalization so this catecholamine normalization has to be documented okay because in pheochromocytoma we have seen that the catecholamine levels are elevated more than four times that has to be documented now whether the catecholamine levels have been normalized or not after the tumor and next important is you also need to do the ACH test this ACH test it should be used to exclude the cortisol deficiency okay because when you are doing bilateral adrenalectomy sparing the adrenal cortex there is chance that there is an accidental removal of the adrenal cortex when you do an ACTH test you need to check for increase in the cortisol levels if there is increase in the cortisol levels after giving ACTH after doing bilateral adrenalectomy with cortical cortex sparing that means that the cortex is preserved but if the cortisol is not increasing after giving this after doing this ACTH test that means the adrenal cortex also has been damaged okay so this ACTH test has to be done mainly in case of bilateral adrenal manipulative surgeries right then coming to the treatment for the paragangliomas see head and neck paragangliomas they are challenging to the surgeon why because these head and neck paragangliomas they are present adjacent to vital structures they are present adjacent to the important vessels of our body like carotid they are present adjacent to the ascending iota or adjacent to the arch of iota or they are present adjacent to the very important cranial nerves so whenever you are trying to manipulate this paragangliomas there is a very high chance that the vessels and as well as cranial nerves they can get damaged and that will be the permanent side effect so for that reason you have the alternative treatment for this paragangliomas that is radiotherapy and as well as the chemotherapy
okay so radiotherapy particularly it is useful mainly whenever there is a large head and neck paraganglioma whenever there is a large head and neck paraganglioma radiotherapy is one of the alternative method right now mainly where do you come across this paraganglioma i have said you that is in patients with the hereditary syndromes so hereditary syndromes they are associated with multiple tumor sites and these features should be anticipated in patients with germline mutations especially in ret proto oncogene von hippel lindau gene and then succinate dehydrogenase d gene or succinate dehydrogenase b gene so remember in hereditary syndromes they are associated with multifocal tumor sites that means you have multiple paragangliomas mainly in these tumor in these gene mutations okay right now what are the various treatment approaches for the metastatic tumors number 1 tumor mass reduction alpha blockers chemotherapy nuclear medicine radiotherapy stereotactic radiation so these are all the various options for the treatment of the metastatic tumors or paragangliomas okay right now out of all these which is the first line choice so the nuclear medicine radiotherapy will be the first line choice now what are the various options of the nuclear medicine radiotherapy so if you see the nuclear medicine radiotherapy is the first line choice and the various options that we have is iodine 131 mibg therapy the dosage of this iodine 131 mibg will be 100 to 300 millicuri doses that should be given over 3 to 6 cycles right that should be given over 3 to 6 cycles and the other form of the nuclear medicine radiotherapy options that we have is or radionuclide substances that we have is dotatoc labeled yttrium 90 and lutetium 177 both of them are somatostatin right both of them are somatostatin receptor ligands okay so these are the various methods of the nuclear medicine radio therapy options which are available for the treatment of paragangliomas right that is radiotherapy next is the chemotherapy so the chemotherapy protocol that we follow is averbux chemotherapy protocol in which you have three important drugs that is dacarbazine cyclophosphamide and as well as the vincristine so dacarbazine you need to give the dosage as 600 mg per meter square on day 1 and as well as day 2 cyclophosphamide you need to give is 750 mg per meter square that has to be given on day 1 whereas vincristin the dosage is 1.4 mg per meter square that has to be given on day 1 right so all of these three have to be repeated right all of these three have to be repeated every 21 days right they have to be repeated every 21 days for 3 to 6 cycles right for 3 to 6 cycles so that is what is called as the averbux chemotherapy protocol mainly for paragangliomas right then you have some new targeted chemotherapy options right apart from this averbux chemotherapy protocol we have deeper studies of the genetics of the pheochromocytoma now we are able to understand even the molecular pathways which are leading to pheochromocytoma so you need to give or you need to target that molecular pathways which will predispose to the development of pheochromocytoma that particular new targeted chemotherapy options include sulitinib is one and the other options are temozolomide 
and as well as the thalidomide. These are under development mainly to target that new molecular pathways, right? 